COVID-19, Nigeria reviews response and perfect strategies as interministerial and multi-sectoral meet. Develop clear-cut line of action, Vice President Oshimbajo, the Terrorist Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons. The Supreme Court at Jones on Emo and Zamfara Governorship Election Judgments. Good evening and a warm welcome to the Network News at 9. I am Kenne Ima Abodikim. Reading with me tonight is Jennifer Igwe from Lagos and Naomi Abaku in Maiduguri. Thank you for joining us. The confirmation of the first case of coronavirus disease, COVID-19, in Nigeria has led to the reconvening of the interministerial and multi-sectoral meeting on preparedness and response to the global scourge. Uh, following the evaluation of the issues revolving around Nigeria's efforts as protecting citizens from the disease, there was renewed impetus and the resolve by key players to synergize towards optimal action on the preparedness, response and containment of the disease in the country. Health correspondent Rabbi Abdullah has the report. When the maiden meeting of the interministerial and multisectoral preparedness and response and COVID-19 was convened on the 31st of January this year, Nigeria was in a secured state from the disease. The agenda and focus of this follow-up meeting is therefore a more brainstorming one for obvious reason. Ministers of the line ministries and representatives of relevant agencies involved in the preparedness and response on the disease took turns to highlight efforts and challenges with the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehanire, driving the health component. The opportunity to address all, to, to assure Nigerians that the Federal Ministry of Health has been strengthening measures to ensure that an outbreak in Nigeria is controlled and contained. A multi-sectoral corona preparedness group led by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has been activated at its emergency operations center and we work closely with Lagos State Health Authorities to respond to this case and implement firm control measures. The immediate um, national investment which we really want this honorable house to do or to address, the national stockpile of response commodities, the renovation and strengthening of treatment centers, digitalization of surveillance and contact uh, tracing across the country. We are using so much. We have started, but we still want to continue. Then for the states, uh, investment in treatment centers. For the port health, I think uh, there is there's a need to see synchronization or harmonization of the information from those who enter the country vis-a-vis -vis the data that is being collected by NCDC. How do we track these people? What lies ahead is an action plan that identifies gaps where prevention, response and containment of COVID-19 is concerned. At a news conference that preceded the meeting, the health minister reiterated that there is no new case of COVID-19 apart from the index case on Lagos. In Abuja, Rabi Abdullah, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has again assured that the information dissemination platforms under his ministry have the capacity to generate the desired awareness and enlightenment campaign to sensitize the populace about the ongoing campaign to ensure that Nigerians live well in the face of the current COVID-19 pandemic. Anthony Forsen reports. 
making their submissions at the reconvened interministerial and multisectoral meeting for public health emergency preparedness and response to the novel coronavirus awareness and sensitization. The Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, his Radio Nigeria counterpart, as well as that of the National Orientation Agency, briefed the meeting and made some proposals. So I want to use this opportunity to call on all the stakeholders uh, present here to please give us through the Ministry of Information all the relevant information that needs to be uh, given out to the public. We have the platforms, we have the units, we are ready, and uh, once we have the contents, uh, you can leave the rest of us and we can assure you that uh, the information will get to the uh, right uh, corners. We try to do programs in order to make sure that people do not panic because that is one of the most important things in this kind of situation. If you allow people to panic, then you have even much bigger problem in your hands. To activate and populate all our social media outfits with this information, develop flyers in local languages on what to do, and then craft the messages that will send out. Now we are seeking partnership with both the NTA and the Federal Radio Corporation to send out these messages already in Igbo, in Yoruba, in Hausa, in Fulfulde and in Pigeon. With this strategy as a way forward, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed was quick to sue for caution from the states. When we have control of our FRCM platform, we don't have control of the state's you know, platforms. And the state levels are probably even much more important for this kind of advocacy than um, the federal you know, uh, government platform. So please, we appeal to all state governments that this is not political. This is about Nigeria. Uh, secondly, we also resolved that um, we would want to be giving updates on all our news bulletins every hour on radio, television, and the news agency platform. But we need the content so we can get an hourly update. We don't need, it doesn't need to be anything new. But some people who did not hear it at 10 o'clock might hear it at 11 o'clock. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Meanwhile, every passenger on arrival at the nation's international airport must submit to screening exercise instituted to check the importation of coronavirus and other infectious diseases into the country. This is the stand of Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika at a multi-sectoral follow-up meeting on COVID-19 in Abuja after receiving complaints that some very important personality and airlines are not complying with said guidelines. Emmanuel Ayimiro tells us more. Some high-profile persons um, uh, oh, oh, don't always want to fill their phone on arrival. Why? Because they say their phones are, are, are given to them on the aircraft very late. These are some constraints faced by port health services in the bid to put the nation on the path of sound health at airports. The story that must change as federal government begins enforcement of total compliance. So we do need to know who these VIPs are. No one can sack you because their, their action or inaction will sack all of us because will kill us. So we'll sack them before they sack you. So it's important that we know this. You can quietly um, send the message uh, to Honorable Minister and I'm sure that will be reported to us and we'll deal with this, that, that person. Agencies in the aviation sector pledged their complementary roles in achieving zero importation of infectious diseases into the country. If the crew members can pick this passenger on board, that is developing symptoms, showing symptoms, the um, pilot of command notifies the uh, air traffic control of this nation aerodrome and the air traffic control notifies the port health services. By the time the plane touches down, the plane is packed in uh, a separate place, and that is contained. It doesn't come into the terminal building. To show the issue a sample, 
Hadisirika in 2018 during the Ebola scare was caught on camera subjecting himself to screening on arrival at the Abuja airport. Emmanuel Ayimiro, NT News. The Ministry of Interior is advocating improved and advanced passenger information at Nigeria's International Airport as a way of curbing the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Georgina Ehuria, made the suggestion at an interministerial meeting to combat the spread of coronavirus in Abuja. It is very important that we have complete uh, passenger information of all passengers from their point of uh, origin, not just uh, at the transit stage. Because while uh, many flights may not be coming directly from the countries that we have a, uh, will have a very high index suspicion on right now, a lot of people might be coming to us through uh, transit from other airlines. And uh, we felt that the Nigerian Port Authority should uh, change its uh, way of uh, reporting uh, advanced passenger information to start from their point of, uh, their port of origin. On his part, the Comptroller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandede, pledges support of the service in the fight against the dreaded virus. The immigration officer, he has to have contact with a person. I think he's the only person at the point of entry who is coming closer to a passenger. Person. You must interact. You must collect the passport. You must interview the person. So there is communication. That's why we wrote to you to give us the professional advice or the equipment responsible. So if we can be able to have that, it's okay. But we are ready to work and we will continue to work with Port Health wherever we are operating. The meeting involves key players in Nigeria's response strategy. Passenger screening processes and healthcare strategies have been heightened at the Motela Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, as we speak, a development that has generated a commendation from travelers on the proactiveness of the federal government. Michael Olaleye has details. Details. The Italian with the first index case of coronavirus in Nigeria was actually one of the passengers who passed through this thermal imaging machine last week without a scanner raising any alarm. Now the measures at the Mutala Mohammed International Airport have been strengthened to address unforeseeable lapses as screening of passengers takes an average of 10 minutes. This is in addition to filling a bow data form to track travelers. For those passengers coming from China, Iran and other countries with suspected cases of coronavirus, the screening is more intensive. We are coming from US and um, they didn't take this precaution. I'm impressed. I'm not bothered. I can waste as much time as possible here to get it done right. I think the measures are okay. Uh, we filled up the form and we all screened. There were no exemptions and that's uh, a work class standard. All agencies at the airport are more vigilant and adhering to health care measures. The airline to have it as a duty to screen their passengers on their own and of course adopting the same mechanism of having the health history of individual and of course having a carrier machine to check their body status. These strategies put in place to contain the spread of the virus transcend the premises of the Mutala Muhammad Airport as the governor of Lagos State also inspected isolation ward and biosecurity laboratory at the Infection Disease Hospital in Lagos. Michael Olale, NT News. The Kano State Ministry of Health has put in place measures to prevent the infiltration of COVID-19 into the state. This was disclosed at a meeting attended by people of vested interest. Hadiza Muhammad reports. Kano of the densely populated area, commercial nerve center and home of the first West African International Airport, it becomes necessary for the state government to take stringent measures 
to prevent importation of COVID-19 into the country. It was against this background that the state government reactivated the rapid response team to ensure surveillance and create awareness among people on symptoms and precautionary measures against the deadly disease. Any case that, that is brought or that is part of that center. And um, we have been positioned drugs and personal protective equipment in the center. Kano State Government has also deployed personnel to the Amina Kano International Airport to ensure proper screening of air travelers. The meeting advised citizens not to panic or spread unverified rumor and report any suspected case to the nearest healthcare facility. It was attended by the representatives of the state government, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, and other relevant stakeholders. From Kano, Hadiza Muhammad, NTN News. River State Ministry of Health, in collaboration with Federal Airport Authority, has embarked on intensive screening and adequate precautionary measures to forestall the spread of coronavirus to the state. Hijama Ugweke has the situation report. This is part of the measures from airport officials to check coronavirus and reduce the risk of the disease from entering into river states. At the airport, passengers were subjected to thermal scan for temperature and to identify persons with dry cough and running nose. I think uh, the health department is taking a security measure. There is a strong synergy between us in the airport and River State Government to ensure quick intervention um, for such to be a faculty from the airport. He also advised Nigerians to desist from traveling to countries like China and Japan. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Gweke, NTNews. And in response to the WHO warning for communities to be at alert and the recent report of coronavirus in Nigeria, Akwaibom State Government has set up task force and subcommittees to up its game against COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Dominic Hubong, while addressing press men in New York, the Aquaibon State Capital also emphasized that the state is engaging relevant institutions to ensure that the residents of the state are safe. Following the confirmation of coronavirus in Nigeria, the first in sub-Saharan Africa, Aquaibon State Government has put in place necessary preventive and protective safeguards to ensure that there is no case of COVID-19 in the state. Although no case of this infectious disease has been reported in the state, special isolation works have been created in hospitals to quarantine any suspected infected person. The Aquaibom State Commissioner of Health, Dominic Okbong, noted that the state government has also distributed private personal protective equipment and warned the Kwaibom people against the consumption of what is commonly known as bushmeat, since they are often associated with the transmission of these infectious diseases like Lassa fever and COVID-19. Kwaibomites and residents in Kwaibom state that we have been beefing up our preparedness capabilities since the first confirmation of the case in China. And we will use all the resources made available by the government to respond to this case. In line with beating up preparedness, the Health Commissioner charged the Kwabom people on improved and consistent hygiene in Uyo, Ifoma IOJ, NTN News. We now take some messages. The news continues after this timeout. Stay tuned. <laughs> data plans. Dial star 141 hash today. Data 
is life. Airtel, the smartphone network. It is morning. A new beginning. As you prepare everyone for the day ahead, just anything is not enough. Only you make breakfast special. Creamy. Tasty. With vitamins and nutrients we need for delightful healthy start so start your day right with Hollandia Evap Hollandia <laughs> oh, this is beautiful <sighs> quality is vital quality is vital foam hello honey hey baby wow those guys are good in bed. <laughs> what? Yes, we're good in bed. Hurry now to any Vitafoam accredited dealer nationwide or visit us online on www.vitafoamng.com to place your order today. Vitafoam, the fine art of living. Wake up, wake up. Nothing can hold us down. Breakfast your day. Every day. Nestle. Good food, good life. Banter better with Coca-Cola and stand a chance to win an all-expense-paid trip to the UK to watch a live Premier League game or your share of 400 million naira in instant cash prizes. Simply buy a bottle of Coke or Coke Zero. Look under the cap for your unique code and dial star 4255 star 55 star your unique code hash to stand a chance to win. The more Coke you buy, the better your chances of winning. See pack labels and posters for more details. Promo starts March 1st and ends May 31st. When I was pregnant, I worried you would look like your dad. But look at you. After six months, I worried about the right foods to give you. Now you've grown so much. Your doctor says anemia can affect your growth and slow your learning. Mom is right. Seven out of ten kids in Nigeria suffer from iron deficiency, which can cause anemia. One meal of Cerilac Junior with Iron Plus provides 50% of your child's daily iron needs to support proper growth and learning. That's reassuring. Cerilac Junior with Iron Plus. It's all good, Mom. As you know, kids' exam time is exam time for moms too. The child prepares intensely, so does the mom. Taking care of every little thing. But germs can ruin it all. What if he falls ill on his exam day? Every single day is important for kids. That's why they need Dettol Soap. It protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday protection, everyday Dettol. 65 grams, now 150 naira. Helen! Hey, where's your mom? Today is her toilet day. What? Helen! Toilet day? Tomorrow you're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with all this. It still won't be party ready. Impossible! Challenge? You take a half XNX. Even if you use this solution 10 times, it won't give you the same cleaning like Harpic. Its new ticket formulation sticks to the bowl better, removes old stains, and gives you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow! New Harpic 10X gives me the freedom from toilet day. New Harpic 10X for 10 times better cleaning. COVID-19 transmission is mostly through droplets from sneezing and saliva. The most effective way to protect yourself from the virus is to practice good personal hygiene. Wash hands with soap under running water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer if water is not available. Maintain at least two meters distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Cover your mouth and nose with your elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Dispose of the used tissue 
immediately. If you have traveled recently to a country with COVID-19 outbreak in the last 14 days and you have a fever, cough or breathing difficulty, call NCDC toll-free numbers before going to the hospital. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. Following the directive of President Mohamed Bugari at the last meeting of the National Security Council for a review of the report of the Presidential Committee on Small Arms and Light Weapons, Vice President Yemi Onshimbajo this Monday chaired the inaugural meeting of the review panel calling for the development of clear-cut specific line of action to address the problems of small and light weapons in the country. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Members of the review committee at the inaugural meeting comprised the Anthony General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, Ministers of Interior, Ogbeni Raouf Aregbe Shola, Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, the National Security Advisor, retired Major General Babagina Mungunu, and the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, as well as the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, retired Colonel Ahmed Ali. Others include Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, Chief of Defense Intelligence, Air Vice Marshal Mohamed Usman, and the Chairman of Prescom, Ambassador Emmanuel Imohe with Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo chairing the meeting. The caliber of members underscores the importance and urgency attached to the issue at hand. The problem arising from the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, an issue that Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo describes as really enormous. The Vice President explained that President Muhammad Buhari is keen on effective and prompt solutions to this problem, the Vice President assured that a clear-cut set of strategies to curb and curtail the problem would be developed soon. In the State House, Jide Unifade, NJ News. The Presidency has expressed deep sadness and regret over the latest bandits attack in Kaduna State that killed several people and left many injured. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garaba Shego, says it is obvious that the bandits are unleashing their fury and frustration on innocent people because of the ongoing military and police offensive against them in the burning quarry and Kaduru forests. This administration is stated would not be blackmailed by criminals to abandon the current military operations against them. President Buhari, however, assures the people of Kaduna State and other parts of the country that this government would continue to deploy all available resources to fight the cold-hearted bandits with a view to bringing them to their knees. Now, Governor Nasir Ahmed Erufai says robust security arrangements will be put in place to Kaduna State to guarantee the safety of lives and property of the citizens. The Governor gave the assurance during an assessment visit to communities affected by bandits' attack in Giwa and Egabi local government areas. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports. Five communities, Marina, Kerawa, Hashimawa, Zariawa and Gormusa in the Gebi and Gyo local government areas came under attack by government on Sunday. Eyewitness accounts revealed that the bandits invaded the communities in large numbers, shooting sporadically before they touched houses and caused damage to lives and property. They come after the early morning prayer and open fire. Governor Nasur Ahmad Erufai, accompanied by heads of security agencies, sympathized with the victims, describing the incident as unfortunate. For me, as governor of Kaduna State, any bandit from anywhere is a bandit. Any bandit of whatever religious or ethnic extraction is a bandit. And in Kaduna State, we have zero tolerance for bandits. We don't give them amnesty. We don't negotiate with them. We have asked the security agencies to just wipe them out. He commended the combined effort of security agencies who neutralized some of the bandits, urging the community to support them with relevant information. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, 
NTN News. More reports on as we join Naomi in Meduguri. Hello and welcome to Meduguri. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar says everything possible is being done to boost the morale of personnel of Air Tax Force Operation Lafia Dole by providing them with the necessary equipment for enhanced performance in the theater of operations. He gave the assurance while inaugurating the newly constructed aircraft hangar at the Air Tax Force Command in Meduguri, the Bonham State Capital. Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa has the report. Current efforts by the federal government in securing additional platforms to support the ongoing counterinsurgency operations requires hangars to protect the aircraft and ammunition from the harsh weather. Addressing officers and men of the Air Task Force before inaugurating the aircraft hangars, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abu Bakr assured to continue to boost morale of troops to enable them deliver on their mandates. Chief of Air Staff said provision of the hangar became necessary in view of the harsh weather conditions setting in, hence the need for protective measures for maintenance personnel to work effectively on the aircraft. With what we have here, we can bring in our aircraft into this hangar and do our maintenance in comfort. The airmen will be more relaxed and they will concentrate more and they will do a better job. And they will also feel that the system is concerned about them. Commander Air Task Force Operation Lafayette Dodi, Air Commodore Precious Amadi, thanked the Chief of Air Staff for his untiring commitment towards their welfare and provision of infrastructure for optimum performance and comfort of NAV personnel, especially in the Northeast. After unveiling the hangar, the Chief of Air Staff held a closed-door meeting with personnel at the Air Task Force Operation Lafayette Dodi on the ongoing Operation Rattlesnake Tree. In Meduguri, Abu Bakar Mohammed Musa, NTA News. The need for unity of purpose among leadership and critical stakeholders of Bruno and Yobe State towards addressing challenges confronting the two states has again been stressed. This was during a courtesy call on Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Omar Zulum by the Forum of Borno and Yobe Residents in Abuja to commiserate with the government and people of Borno over terror attacks on communities in the state. Muhammad Guni reports. The Borno Yobe Forum resident in Abuja was formed in the wake of the Boko Haram insurgents in the two states to extend support to the internally displaced persons through the state's government. Chairman of the forum, architect Ibrahim Bunu, said they were in the state to sympathize with the government and people over the recent terror attacks on communities leading to loss of lives and property. The forum acknowledged steps taken by the federal government and the Nigerian military to end the terror activities which enable IDPs to return to their traditional places of abode. However, expressed concern over the renewed attacks. We are in the same way, through the instrumentality of your office, extending our total support and solidarity to the federal government led by President Muhammad Buhari in his genuine commitment to fight the terrorists to a halt. The Borneoyobe Forum applauded Governor Babagana Umara for his passion to improve the loss of the citizenry. Governor Babagana Umara the lauded the formation of the forum, saying the two states are inseparable, given their shared culture and geographical antecedents. We have an improvement in strategy, resource deployment and consultation since the AUNO episode. We are confident that by the grace of the Almighty, we will win this war and restore peace in our state. The governor who stressed the need to resuscitate the economy of the state, as well as job creation for the team in youth, further highlighted developmental stride embarked on in the state, as well as steps taken to establish civil authorities in local government areas around the shores of the lecture. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NT. Nice back to you in Abuja. Agriculture, where the federal government has expressed deep concern over the persistent hike in the price of homegrown rice. To this end, key players in the industry have to look inward and check the trend in the best interest of the nation. Yahasu has surveys when he met facing the industry in the federal right. representative of the milling industry acknowledge the federal government giant strikes, which includes zero tariff on agricultural machineries and equipment, as well as subsidy on agricultural inputs. This, he noted, has significantly facilitated growth in the agricultural sector from 2.4 million in 2010 to 
3.6 million hectares in 2018. In Kanu, Asambaro, NTA News. Worried about low yield by farmers occasioned by faulty planting models, the Nigerian Incentive Based Risk Sharing System, NASAL, and Nigerian Meteorological Agency signed a memorandum of understanding to furnish farmers with relevant weather information to aid agriculture in the country. Chimobi Walter Naji now reports. Nigeria is said to be losing trillions of dollars and man hours annually to low yields as a result of using primitive methods in planting, which include not paying adequate attention to weather predictions before embarking on any planting season. To know this, this gathering today is really not for merrymaking, but to roll out measures in mitigating this loss. We in NASA envision that this partnership will lead to the generation and provision of agro meteorological weather information and other strategic services to support finance and investment decisions. It is committed to providing timely, accurate, and reliable weather and climate information in order to guide policy and decision making, as well as provide weather and climate advisories to our stakeholders across all sectors of national endeavors, including agriculture that contribute to the development of our dear nation. Their resolve to this course saw the two government organizations uh, signing a memorandum of understanding to make agribusiness in the country more attractive and reliable. The weather report is expected to aid farmers in making appropriate decisions on when to head to the farms. In Abuja, I'm Chimubi Walter Naji. News. Time now to take another break. The news continues after this time out. Enjoy your service. Be nice. You're welcome. Please, where's the restroom? We're just going to your right. Thank you. girl I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house I was so excited to sing in the choir and your shirts are always so white I knew what mum's secret was today I'm a mother and woman that still trusts the secrets passed down to me it's Jake of course the original trusted bleach which can be used all around your house for amazing results Shh. <laughs> It's no secret. It's Jig's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jig it. Everyone lit happily ever after. Auntie, can I have a cookie? Not until you wash your hands with antibacterial soap. Germs are like dragons hiding everywhere. I also want to conquer a dragon, Auntie. Me too. We can. Children are constantly exposed to diseases that cause colds, flu, and diarrhea. Mothers know that washing your hands with antibacterial soap stops the spread of germs and diseases. So you have to wash your hands before touching and eating and when you come home after a long day and after using the toilet. I love my family. And I know you love yours too. That is why I now regularly wash my hands with antibacterial soap. Would you join me as we wash our hands to protect Niger? The Better Clean Niger Initiative is in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. <laughs>
family to a cereal that's made from the natural goodness of maize and soya protein and specially combined with Grain Smart, a smart combination of vitamins and iron. So that they have the right kind of energy to help them reach their full potential and turn the simple into amazing. Eat up and carry go because nothing do you. Golden more make every day amazing. Nestle, good food, good life. to fuel your greatness. Choose Dano Milk for your family because 100% of our milk is sourced from our farms. This means that we control the entire production process from grass to glass, taking great care in every step to ensure the milk that gets to you is of high quality, great tasting, and enriched with essential nutrients that are great for your family. <laughs> in Dano Cool Cow, Dano Full Cream, Dano Slim, and Dano Flavored Milk. Nigel, nah, your love guest. All right, I do believe in love at first sight. I just think it's not possible. You know, as a man, you're moved by what you see. My love at first sight is a mental connection. Personally, don't want someone who's really shorter than I am. Guys really don't pick up on things like that sometimes, and I'm guys. My goal here is to find love. I just like them average, light skin. My move button is just shame me too much love. You might be the most beautiful woman in the world, but if your nails are not straight and clean, I'm doing with you. Bad breath, bad odors of any kind. I'm the Mumu naturally, so... Ah! I'll be gone. I'll be a Mumu for life. I love attention. Maybe food. I want to try again. If a woman is like my heaven, like she gives me peace, I'm good. I was at the point of getting married or my dad didn't approve of the relationship. With me and my mom. I want someone that's a little bit taller than I am and muscular. I think you actually have to know a person to a certain degree before you say you're in love with them. Welcome back. We now join Jennifer in Lagos for the next set of reports. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Kenny, and a warm welcome to Lagos. Now, Dangote Fertilizer Plant will generate $1 billion on an annual production capacity of 3 million metric tons when it goes fully commercial in May 2020. CBN Governor Godwin Emefile, while on a tour of the plant, said the projects are a huge source of revenue drive. Abola De Salami reports. The vast land is accommodating three major projects comprising the Dangote Refinery, Fertilizer Plant and Petrochemical. The Dangote Refinery, which is expected to commence operations in first quarter of 2021, will produce 650,000 barrels of petrol per day, thereby placing Nigeria as a major exporter of petroleum products, while the petrochemical plants will produce plastic products. I know that the cost of freight from Nigeria, Nigeria is so central, that this refinery will serve almost the whole of Africa. And you can imagine the cheap cost of freight. And so, so which means this project is so strategically positioned that it will even make the final cost, of the final price of petroleum within, within Nigeria, even outside, outside Nigeria, to even be lower than those import alternatives that come from different parts of the world. With whatever every government is doing to make sure that we increase employment level, get our industries to be back alive again, and a low interest rate regime we could never have it better than now. The consistent improvement in ease of doing business alongside moderation in interest rates should be seen as a motivating factor for entrepreneurs to invest in the nation's economy for the good of all. We are going to help in terms of not only creating jobs, but in terms of uh, reducing the outflow of foreign exchange, not only in petroleum uh, products, but also in petrochemicals, in fertilizer, and co. So we will be one of the highest foreign exchange generating company going forward. Uh, you can see the level of work that we have uh, done. It is a very, very huge uh, project. Nigeria now will become the largest exporter of petroleum products in Africa. 
The factory, which by July will generate about 500 megawatts of energy to power the plants, already has more than 34,000 direct and indirect workforce in the factory. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. And for more on business, let's join Muplan.com for the business news segment. Muplan, over to you. Jennifer, and welcome to Business News. We begin with a report on Nigeria's manufacturing sector growth. The Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index PMI in the month of February stood at 58.3 index points, indicating expansion in the manufacturing sector for the 35th consecutive time. Data from the Central Bank of Nigeria shows that the index grew at a slower rate when compared to the January figures, which stood at 59.2%. Of the 14 surveyed subsectors, 12 reported growth above 50% threshold in the review month, while the primary metal and printing and related support services subsectors recorded declines. The equities market closed today on a negative note. The NSE All Share Index depreciated by 1.53% to close at 25,816.57 basis points, while 325 billion shares exchanged hands in 5,054 deals. Nine gainers were recorded led by Afripod as against 28 losers stopped by Nestle at the end of the day's session, an unimproved performance when compared with the previous outlook. Market turnover closed negative as volume moved down by 21.87% as against 79.81% uptick recorded on Friday. Guarantee Zenith Bank and UBA were the most active to boost market turnover with Guarantee and Nestle topping market value list. And still talking stocks, coronavirus panic sent world stock markets tumbling last week, recording their combined largest weekly fall since 2008 global financial crisis, with $5 trillion wiped from the global market as at today. But surprisingly, stocks rose today, Monday. In the United States, the Dow Jones Industrial Average traded 750 points higher, or 3%. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite both climbed more than 2.8%. European stocks also appreciated slightly, with only DAX index recording a loss of 0.27%. Major markets in Asia also attempted to bounce back today. China's Shanghai Composite was 3.15%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index also advanced 0.62%. And that's it on Business News. Kene? Thank you, Bob Blank. Of course, uh, coronavirus is also hitting global sports at the moment. Oh, really? Really. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to the judiciary where the, um, of course, hearing by the Supreme Court on the application filed by the former governor of Himo State, Emeka Ihedua, of People's Democratic Party, PDP, uh, seeking a review of 8 February 13th earlier judgment of the Apex Court was forestalled uh, following a request for adjournment by counsel to Ihedua, Kanwa Gabi, son, to enable him respond to a motion served on him this morning while in court by the respondent. Judiciary correspondent Vera Chimuba earlier this morning was at the Supreme Court and she now tells us more. The seven-man panel of justices of the court presided over by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, was set to hear the applications brought by the former governor of Imo State, Emeka Ihedioha, and PDP seeking a review of the 14th February judgment of the court, which ruled that Hope Uzodema at APC proved that results from 388 polling units of the state were unlawfully excluded from the collated votes. The former governor had filed the application on the 5th of February, urging the court to set aside this earlier judgment on the ground that the court acted without jurisdiction and the judgment was obtained by fraud and deceit, resulting in the court being misled. When the case was mentioned, counsel to Emeka Ihedioha Kanu Agabi, SAN, informed the court that he was served the motion in court this morning by the respondent and requested for time to respond. The court granted the request and adjourned for Tuesday, 3rd of March. 
The case of APC candidates seeking a review of May 24, 2019 judgment of the court, which voided the votes of the party candidates in the 2019 general election, was also postponed because some candidates were not represented in court following the inability of the counsel, Robert Clark, SAM, to serve them. The court directed that all parties involved in the matter be served with the necessary applications. Some lawyers don't want to receive, some want to receive. But as uh, the court rightly pointed out, I will check two alternatives. Those of them who are not ready to cooperate with us, we will withdraw their names from the case. It was for this same reason that this case was adjourned two weeks ago, or more than two weeks ago. I thought by today they would, they would have put their house in order. Hearing in both cases fixed for 3rd and 17th of March. In Abuja, Viera Chumuba, NTN News. President Mohamed Bukhari joins the Christian community in celebrating the general of a seer of redeemed Christian Church of God. Pastor Enoch Adejare Adeboira, 78, saluting his dedication to God, welfare of the church, and consistency in preaching and living the gospel for many years. A statement signed by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, says the president felicitates with the redeemed Christian Church of God, members of Pastor Adeboira's family, commending the positive influence the preacher has had on the country and its citizens with a wide network that hugely impacts on education, infrastructure and health. President Buhari prays that the Almighty God will grant Pastor Adeboy a longer life, good health and more wisdom to continue sharing the love of Christ. Let's now go for another break on the network news. <laughs> On Tuesday Live this week, proactive measures in containing the first case of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Plus, sustaining the conversation on increase in electricity tariff and other issues with those who should know. Tuesday Live at 10.30 p.m. will be incisive. Don't miss it. Now, today, or four days, when my girls won't come visit, they need to come go expire. Oh, my guys, they can't follow me, watch this match. I must want to fold the hand. Hey! Baby, hey. 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 what's happening now? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my GoTV package. Now, you're all be that. I beg, give me your phone. I can show you how you go take Dua for my Go TV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my Go TV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah. Oh. With the call. Yeah. The new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV. Live it, love it. No perfect family may be under threat by germs. Germs can cause infectious diseases like diarrhea, typhoid, and flu. These infectious diseases are amongst the biggest killers of adults and children. In Nigeria, tens of thousands of children under the age of five have died due to diarrhea caused by germs. These illness-causing germs are everywhere. Dirty surfaces, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, in unclean bathing water. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettol's one capful. For surface cleaning, for first aid, for your laundry, in your bathing water, and to protect your family from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Introducing Dettol with Aloe Vera. Soothing Aloe Vera, the power of Dettol, which is soft on skin and hard on germs. Be Dettol Sure. Your information day important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fits call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel, 
<laughs> and time for my phone in Hawaii because now my correct phone number is for Boo. Go TV. Live it. Love it. Don't look me again, no. Make you go do your own. President Mohamed Buhari has commiserated with the Aliyu family in Berlin Kudu, Jigawa State, over the death of its patriarch, Al Haji Aminu Aliyu. A statement by Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shegu, the President condoles in particular with Honorable Magaji Aliyu, the Chairman, House Committee on Power, and his longtime political associate, Honorable Farouk Adamu Aliyu, urging them to take solace in the knowledge that the departed God head of their family lived a life of dedicated service to his community and humanity. President Buhari also joined the government and people of Jigawa State mourning the deceased as prayed to God to console the Aliyu's family, he loved wounds and grant rest to the departed. The body of later Ahmed Abdukadiri Dafida, former general manager, NTA Channel 5 Abuja, has been buried at the Gudu Cemetery in Abuja. Abdullahi Ajiya reports that the FCT Minister Mohamed Musa Bello, among other Nigerians from all walks of life, attended the Janaiza prayer. Muslim faithful from far and near, including seven and retired staff of the NTA, converged on the National Mosque for the Janaiza prayer led by the Murshid of the National Mosque, Professor Shehu Ahmed Said Galadanchi, for the body of late Ahmed Abdul Qadir Tafida, who passed on on Sunday, 1st of March 2020. Allahu Akbar. We pray to Almighty Allah to accept, his, um, accept him and grant him al Jannah Fildos. Thereafter, the body was conveyed to Gudu Cemetery in company of family members, friends and associates, where he was finally committed to Mother Earth with prayer for Allah's mercy on his soul. The late A. A. Tafida, as he is fondly called, many say will be missed for his humility, uprightness and professionalism, describing him as an embodiment of peace and righteousness. Abdullah Hajiya, NTA News. Ifanya Ezumba now brings us tribute to the late Tafida. Aside from serving the Nigerian Television Authority NTA, the late Ahmed Abdul Kadri Tafida held national honor of the Officer of the Order of the Niger and all the important positions of authority. During his time as the General Manager of NTA Channel 5 Abuja, he gave credit where it was due. Through such initiative, hard-working members of the staff were acknowledged and credit given to them in appreciation. Friends, colleagues and associates described him as a seasoned broadcaster, producer and an excellent administrator. He was also a social advocate for the right of all in the society. He encouraged us, especially our own generation and the subsequent ones coming, to serve the nation diligently. I've never seen such a pleasant person in my life, like A. A. Tafida. My mentor, A. A. Tafida, he brought me to this town. He employed me as a staff of NTA. Humanity is what he believed in right from his youthful age. The late Ahmed Abdul Kadri Tafida was survived by family. Tfani is Continues. May you so rest in peace. We've come to the end of the network news tonight. Thanks indeed for watching. My name is Kenneth Ima Abudike. Good night. <laughs>